okay welcome to my youtube channel and um we previously have been working on paystax api we implemented the asset payments api and now we are going to looking at transfers how do you make transfers from um your paystack wallet to your customers so we're going to be looking at it from their documentation and there's a code written out that clearly actually does the same job now you could use it to manipulate it to suit your purpose now it's just the same a simple structure that um, is very uh, flexible to use so the language of choice currently is cake php so let's dive straight into it so and um i think i'll have to explain what the the uh, the documentation says okay let's go to the the overview they have two types of um transfers they have the single transfer and the bulk transfer single transfer you just send it to one person then bulk transfer send to multiple um people at the same time so we'll look at the simple single transfer first so there are actually four steps to make a transfer you verify the account number you create a transfer recipient now for verifying account number you could do that manually or um, or you can actually use their api for verifying account number you can see it here verify account number then you would make create a transfer recipient they are going to generate a code for you which you use to authorize the payments later so and um now we have to initiate the transfer then after initiating the transfer then you listen for transfer status this is very important as transfers actually start as spending i've previously explained the different status of transfer you have the completed pending you have so many of them just five of them so you could look check my previous video out for them so then how you could implement webhooks i've previously um <clears throat> done a video on webhooks so um going down you see that there are lists of banks that that paystack actually banks that they actually work with so you could use their api so for the banks there so that your customer can select that then the transfer recipient then um you create a transfer recipient then from there <coughs> from there then creating an account a transfer recipient actually uses name account number bank code currency which is nigeria here yeah. so and um, you get your authorization code which is here yeah, um, then from there you initiate a transfer and be ready then you put your recipient code yeah recipient code then you put it there then you um okay so you look at it here yeah. then you put the source from your balance then account and then the amount you put the amount then the recipient's code then the uh, reason so you put it there if it's loan repayment you can write it there then always use the same reference number so it's probably this reference number you're seeing here you have to save it somewhere so that you could actually use it to check a trans if you are to retry a transaction use the same reference number to avoid double crediting do you get now okay so if a new reference is used the transfer will be treated as a new request please adhere to this strictly okay so um i know that test transfer always return success because there's no processing involved the live transfer processing usually takes between a few seconds and a few minutes. Okay, when it's done, a notification will be sent to your webhook URL. Did you get now? So, <clears throat> so that's just that. So, and um, there are just three events that they have here: transfer success failed and reversed. So, it this is sent when we refund the previously debited amount for a transfer that could not be completed. So, you can check out their documentation here. So, I can see the event here. Um, this is successful business name is live true integration is live true um reference number source balance and transfer code then they have a whole bunch of stuff here that you can check out okay then even the bank bank name then the account number they have it here then if it fails they also have this here too so and if it's reversed the same thing here so now you could actually add otp to your code you can add otp to your code here 
then um to authenticate the user before then when you are added if you added an otp then you have to finalize transfer with the otp do you get now so it depends on what works for you so um you can have otp enabled on your pay, pay stack dashboard and you initiate a transfer via the api okay so you now get a response message transfer requires otp to continue so you now get the otp and do that so i'll just go straight to uh, making transfer without the otp first so and um, let's dive straight into it so thank you so please let's like subscribe and share my videos and you give us the energy to learn to um, build more videos and um, uh, we are in need of volunteers who are willing to actually work with us and build a, an ecosystem of um, of tech people that that's actually know how to use apis perfectly and this will improve the ecosystem and improve the um, way we use this api so your suggestions and um, um, ideas are actually uh, appreciated thank you